After making that unexpectedly successful video in which I was discussing the current situation with Armstrong Powerhouse, I wanted to review at least one of their products in the same way as I cover Train Sim World routes. The product I chose for this review is the only route that AP have ever made in CS Classic, and that's the Weary Lines. It's quite expensive at £30, or around 61 New Zealand dollars, but the end result is still somewhat pleasant. Originally released in either 2015 or 2016, I can't remember exactly when, this add-on includes the lines from Norwich to Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft, including both routes to Great Yarmouth, with one line going via Acol and the other via Burnie Arms. The total route length is only 44.1 miles, but it features a lot of custom models, such as the stations at all three termini, as well as numerous manual level crossings. And let's not forget the swing bridges and signals too. The latter are especially nice with their realistic clattering sound as the arm moved up instead of down. There's also a different noise depending on if you're travelling over jointed or continuously welded rails, the former giving off that iconic clickety-clack noise. A couple of the stations, namely Buckingham and Burnie Arms, are notable for just how tiny and remote they are, and they have each appeared in their own Jeff Marshall video. Burnie Arms is especially odd because it's one of the few stations in the UK that doesn't have any road access. Meanwhile, Buckingham does have road access, but it's just as remote as Burnie Arms, and the platforms are unusually far apart. Although somewhat ironically, services to Buckingham will only stop there on weekends. And you certainly wouldn't want to be stuck at either of those stations after the last train. A notable change that came with AP's supposedly big update for this route relates to the track. It now uses the same fancy textures from AP's track enhancement pack, and while I won't deny that the track looks good, I'm not prepared to pay the £12, or around $24 New Zealand dollars they're charging for the main pack. The route doesn't really come with any rolling stock itself. Well, the updated version doesn't anyway. Originally, we got some Mark II coaches and a reworked Class 37 in direct rail services colours, with this 37 being built on the model that comes with the Cecil to Carlisle route, and that was just a rehash of the old RSC Class 37 model. The scenarios in the updated version of the Wherry Lines now require AP's newer Mark II D to F coach pack, as well as their actual Class 37 locomotive pack. And that was a whole new model with too many variants to mention in this video. The scenarios don't require too much motive power, in the grand scheme of things, but almost all of those requirements are AP products. While this does make it easier to find, since you're only having to go to one website outside of Steam, the add-ons are very expensive unless you can get them in a sale. Speaking of the prices, you'll just about bleed your wallet dry if you get this add-on outside of a sale. I've already mentioned the price for the Wary Lines route itself, but unlike Dovetail's routes, or any payware routes in TS Classic that I know of, this one requires multiple other route add-ons to be installed as well. Namely the Great Eastern Main Line, London to Ipswich, Isle of Wight, and either West Coast Main Line over Shap, or Western Lines of Scotland. Altogether, those routes cost $87.97 NZD, or £42.79 at the normal price.
If you want the included scenarios to work, you'll also need Volume 1 of AP's Class 37 locomotive pack, as well as the Mark II D to F coaches, Class 156 diesel multiple unit pack, and the Class 158 and 170 enhancement packs. The 158 and 170 EPs also require the base NSC Class 159 and Class 170 add-ons respectively. Both are available on Steam. You will also need the Steam version of the Class 90 that AP and Wagons made together, with a modern Greater Anglia reskin included in the extra stock pack. All told, the total cost of getting this route and all the included scenarios to work is an alarming $262.39 NZD, or £127.64. Put simply, that is far too much money to be spending on such a small route. All that motive power is here to recreate scenes from around 2015 to 2017, with the route being set in 2015. Back in those days, Greater Anglia often had to hire in locomotive hauled sets from direct rail services due to a DMU shortage, which is why the rail scene on these lines was so varied. Starting in 2019, the Stadler built Class 755 electro diesel units entered service and they have since taken over all operations out to Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft. Considering the relatively small size of this route, and the limited variety of what you can do, I'm surprised at just how many scenarios AP have still made for it, with the base pack including at least 25 of them, focused on Class 37 hauled services. Before they discontinued all their old scenario packs, they had at least two available for the Wherry Lines, which included six scenarios each. One of them focused on DMU workings with the Class 153, 156, 158 and 170 units, while another focused on the final months of Class 47 hauled services on this route, before the 37s arrived. Of course, you can still make your own scenarios if you know how to do so, but you can still get some additional scenarios for the Wherry Lines with other AP products. Specifically the Class 68 Enhancement Pack, as well as the Class 150 Stroke 2 and Class 156 Packs, but don't forget that these also have their own DLC requirements besides the ones I already mentioned. My wallet is pretty much on life support at this point. Given that this isn't real life, you can run all sorts of other locomotives and units on the Wherry Lines, such as the Great Western Railway's only 462 Pacific, all while completely disregarding historical accuracy. It also means that you can do some utterly stupid stuff like this. And now we go back to some semblance of realism. There are two swing bridges on this route, located at Reedham and Summerleyton, but they are not animated. If I recall correctly, AP's reason for the lack of animation is because the driver doesn't actually see it happen too often in real life but I can't verify how credible that explanation is. In TS Classic, the sidings at Great Yarmouth are depicted in a run-down condition, 
as they were in 2015. But in real life, the yard is now home of Eastern Rail Services and their large collection of older coaches, which can be hired out for use in films. They use a Class 08 to shunt the coaches when required. One of their more recent acquisitions is a Class 321 electric multiple unit, of all things. She arrived at Great Yarmouth in April 2023, after being dragged in by a Class 37. In real life, there's an Asda supermarket right next to Great Yarmouth Station, but it doesn't have any branding in-game, presumably due to licensing restrictions of some kind. At least, I'm pretty sure Asda is a supermarket. Any British people watching are welcome to correct me if I'm wrong. Speaking of Great Yarmouth Station, and as Jeff Marshall once pointed out, it's quite bizarre to see something like the single car class 153 going along such a long platform. This Greater Anglia reskin, for the old Just Trains model, is supplied in the extra stock folder for the Class 68 Enhancement Pack. Not all the assets are custom models, as there are lots of old Koju era assets that were reused at various places. Examples include Summerleton, Reedham, Buckenham and Brundall stations, as well as the buildings next to Reedham Swing Bridge. These assets are noticeably dated, as they date back to the early days of Kuju Rail Simulator in 2007. So why Armstrong Powerhouse thought it was a good idea to reuse them on their first route is anyone's guess. In my opinion, the biggest issue with this route is nothing to do with the actual build quality, which, aside from the reused Kuju assets, isn't all that bad. No, my biggest gripe is that it is simply too small, and there just isn't that much to do. After all, you're essentially just doing the same type of passenger service every time, just with different motive power, and there isn't much service or stopping pattern variation. Although some services to and from Lowestoft will only call at Alton Broad North on the way. I realise that the line up to Sheringham is not part of the Wherry Lines. It's actually called the Bittern Line, with no connection to a preserved LNER A4 steam locomotive. But it would have been nice to see that line included as well. If you can get it at a steep discount, I recommend trying out the Wherry Lines route for yourself if you haven't got it yet. But it's fine by me if this route isn't your cup of tea. As dumb as this may sound, I still think the route is just as expensive as it is, dare I say, pretty, and my parents thought it was interesting too, since they actually took the train from Norwich to Great Yarmouth and back in 1998. And at least there's plenty of realistic motive power available to use on this route, which helps to keep it interesting. <laughs> 